Traditional Insulation and Radiant Barrier At Energy Improvements, we are asked, how does a radiant barrier differ from conventional attic insulation? This is a great question. In order to understand the difference between radiant barrier and conventional attic insulation, you will need to know how heat transfers. There are three types of heat transfer, conductive, convective, and radiant heat. Conductive happens when two solid objects touch each other. Heat is transferred through the objects. A good example is when the stove gets hot. Heat is transferred to the teapot. Convection, when the air is warmed, warm air expands and rises. Finally, radiant heat, the movement of heat from a warm space to a cold space. A good example is heat from a fire moving to the colder areas surrounding the fire. Now that we understand heat transfer, let's move on to how insulation works. Insulation works with heat, similar to a way a sponge works with water. If we pour water into a sponge, it, it can only hold a certain amount of water before it begins to leak from the bottom. Insulation works by trapping air in millions of air pockets and it will slow down the heat. However, when your insulation becomes too full, then the heat will continue onto the cooler regions inside your house. Traditional insulation is an important part of battling the heat transfer. The higher the R value, the greater the insulating effectiveness. According to the Department of Energy, the air in the insulation is an effective insulator because it eliminates convection and has a low conduction. Did you notice there is no mention of traditional insulation stopping radiant heat transfer? NASA had to deal with radiant heat in outer space where the astronauts could go from 200 degrees below zero in the shade to 200 degrees above in the sun. In order to protect the astronauts and the vital electronics inside the spaceship, they created the radiant barrier. The radiant barrier works off of two main principles. Reflectivity. Aluminum is reflective on, on the hot side, which means it will reflect the heat back from where it came from. The energy improvement radiant barrier has 97% reflectivity. Next, radiant barriers work off of the emissivity principle, which means the amount of heat that can pass through from the hot side to the cooler side. Energy Improvement's Radiant Barrier only allows 3% of radiant heat to pass through. What does radiant heat mean to you? In the summer, up to 93% of heat gain is radiant heat. And remember, even the Department of Energy acknowledges that traditional insulation doesn't stop radiant heat transfer. It can only stop convection and conduction. This means your air condition has to run longer in order to cool the excessive heat entering your home. During the winter, your house will lose up to 75% of the radiant heat. This transfer will happen, and it does not matter if you have fiberglass, and cellulose, rock wool, or any new style of insulation. Insulation doesn't stop radiant heat transfer. NASA found what stops radiant heat, and that's a radiant barrier. It has also been proven that a radiant barrier will outperform 4 to 7 feet of conventional insulation. There is no comparison about real bottom line results. For more information on energy savings and also to receive a free ebook, visit energyimprovements.net or, or to schedule a free consultation call 800-256-5867.